Um, I'm doing a small speech talk session about a tiny Joomla security vulnerability that we had in uh, October, no, December 2015. Um, does anyone know what's all about with, with, the, with the session title, where this comes from? Um, there's a, um, a nuclear facility um, that was run by the US Navy, um, which had a, a tiny malfunction. Um, Rein spaziert, setzt euch, nehmt euch ein Sit down, take a copy. Um, this, this, this nuclear facility, they had a tiny malfunction um, causing a core melt and those usual things that happen if, if nuclear facilities have malfunctions. And uh, this facility was uh, quite close to Detroit, the, the big city in, in the US. And uh, it was a malfunction, but not a worst case scenario. And the guy who uh, uh, was taking care of uh, the afterwork and cleaning it all up, all the mess, uh, said uh, if this and this would have happened, uh, this could be much worse. We almost lost Detroit. So it's a sentence that you say if something was bad but could have been much worse. Yeah, uh, my name is David. Uh, I'm from Cologne, lovely city at the River of Rhine in Germany. Um, born there, grown up there, will never move anywhere else. Um, I like the city, um, and uh, I'm a member of the Joomla community for quite some time now. Uh, I started doing Joomla when it was still Mambo. Uh, this is me, myself, and I um, in the uh, the Joomla World Conference 2012, I think, in uh, San Jose, San Francisco. Um, over there, that's the the pond. Uh, in the eBay headquarter with real fish that was an, an awesome venue. Um, if I stop working freelance stuff, I'll probably work at eBay. Um, nice thing. Um, and besides doing all the other stuff, traveling around, um, telling people to get a community up and running, um, I'm also in the junior security team for quite a while now. Um, that's the junior security strike team. No idea who came up with the name, but that's how it's called nowadays. And um, we all together will do a short travel through the time um, using our DeLorean uh, back to December 2015. Uh, it was a lovely Sunday, I think. Yeah, I think so. And uh, I, at this, uh, that day, uh, I was in Frankfurt um, with a few other guys from the German uh, Junior Association uh, board guys. So that's. Uh, Andre, um, the guy who does all the financial stuff. Um, Robert, um, Mr. Grumpy Joomla, as uh, <laughs> that's called him. Uh, that's Stefan, the, the vice president, and that's me. And uh, so far, Robert did all the financial stuff for the, uh, for the uh, association. And um, he gave his very best, uh, to put it this way, but he's not the number guy. Um, and so we had quite some financial mess to sort out. And, uh, Stefan is interested in financial stuff. Andre is fa interested, but I wasn't. I was just sitting there, taking photos, uh, eating cake, and uh, yeah, spending my time while the, they do the real stuff. And uh, while I was sitting there, I uh, was uh, doing some support stuff mm -hmm. at the major German Joomla forum, Joomla Portal.de, um, yeah, to just fill my spare time. And uh, in this forum, I stumbled about a post uh, by a German, bitte? Uh, by a, by a German uh, web hosting company, um, they uh, the, the post said like, oh, um, we have this this client on one of our servers, and he just got hacked, and I have no idea how they did it. Um, here's the access log. Um, you can take a look at it yourself. Side note: If you ever stumble upon a security vulnerability, even a potential one. A public forum is not the place to report it. <laughs> Side note closed. Um, that's how the access lock was looking like. Um, and it, it kind of grabbed my attention for various reasons. Um, the first reason is, um, there's a, it's, it was Joomla specific, so if you take a look at it, there are Joomla class names in it. 
J database driver, J factory, so it has some connection to Joomla. This was one thing. Mm -hmm. The second thing is this inner part. That's uh, the PHP serialization um, syntax. So serialization is about having a, a, an object, an array, something that's in memory, putting it into a string to save it somewhere else. And this is what, what the serialized, uh, serialized stuff looks like. And last but not least, I need to take a look. Um, oh yeah, uh, this part of the access log, um, that's the user agent. So in normal requests, you have information that a guy is using Chrome 39 on, uh, on an OS X in this case, I think. Yeah. And uh, this one is pretty sure not a valid user agent. At least I thought so. And so uh, what I did, I asked the web host first to delete his post in the public forum. Um, and afterwards, um, if he could create a copy of this hacked site or give me access to it so I can take a deeper look. Um, and of course, he did. Um, we didn't pay any attention to privacy. I'm pretty sure we weren't allowed to. Um, but nevertheless, uh, he sent it to me. And uh, the next step was that uh, I reformatted the user agent in order to get an idea of what this stuff is actually doing. Um, but I still didn't have a clue, to be honest. Um, and so I took a different approach. Um, I started taking a look at the Joomla source code where the user agent is actually used. So what, what do they do with this stuff? And um, I found out that there's only one piece of code that makes actual usage of the user agent. Um, and that's uh, JSession. So the class in Joomla that does all the session management stuff. And uh, these lines of code, in theory, are supposed uh, to add an, an, an extra security measure. So the idea is, if I log in with uh, uh, Firefox and uh, I'm logged in as a user then and this gets saved to my sessions, we also save my user agent, my current browser. And each time I do a request to the site, they compare if the user agent saved in the session is still the one that I'm using for this request. Because if there's a mismatch, it's very likely that someone stole my session. It was the idea. Reality is, this code never worked. It's common it out. Um, there's a to-do. <laughs> Finish this later. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, but what it does is we'll save the current user agent in the session. That's what it does on a technical level. Um, and Joomla saves stuff regarding session by default in the database table. So we have the... Uh, prefix underscore session table with the session idea and the actual session data that is saved there. So, if you take a look at the session data, surprise, surprise, you'll find our user agent there. Mm. What I did, I started uh, with uh, copying this user agent from the log file into a Chrome extension that allows me to modify my own user agent because I wanted to try if this does something with not. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, so I used this extension. Um, I opened the site, and it wasn't a big surprise. This malicious string somehow made its way into the session table. And uh, I got back to the site, refreshed it, and I expected some sort of activity. Reality was there was no activity at all. Uh, by the way, uh, design folks uh, from Germany, if you ever need some placeholder text and uh, you are using Lore Ipsum so far, there's a, a, a Bavaria Ipsum uh, <laughs> placeholder text generator with Bavarian stuff. Perfectly awesome. Um, so I started to ask myself, why isn't something happening? I had probably missed something. And so I got back to the log file and uh, found out that there was a strange string at the end of it that I just had left for testing purposes. And uh, I googled it, and what I found was this. That's a UTF-8 MD4 character. Um, UTF-8 MD4 set, and it's a UTF-8 char set that also includes these uh, emojis. Um, and this is where this character comes from. 
Uh, and I had left it out in the first test, but decided to add it now. Um, that's what I did, refresh the site and boom. A strange PHP error message because something executed some code. That's not what you want to have on your side. Um, and I took a look at the database table and I found out that uh, the session data gets truncated. It stops at the very point where this UTF-8 and before character was. That's because of a, a MySQL feature, quirk, bug, one can argue about what it is. Um, but <coughs> in MySQL versions earlier than 553, um, if you have a UTF-8 and before character and insert it into a table, the string gets truncated there. So our foo bar turns into foo. There is a warning, but you'll explicitly need to ask for it, and the default behavior is just truncate it, and that's it. Um, one can argue about if this is a smart thing to do, um, but it's the way it is. Um, the next thing is that I thought, uh, actually, this shouldn't work. Because, you remember, it's uh, serialized session data. So in, in, in serialized uh, data, in PHP, um, you have a, an, uh, an integer number telling that the data inside has a specific length. And afterwards, um, there should be another uh, double quote, and the string should continue. So PHP has its own safety measure, if you, if you want so, uh, to make sure that it's valid data. And if we just truncate the string somewhere, it's invalid, and it's supposed uh, yeah, to tell this to us and start a new session, start over, and not use invalid data. So why does it do this? This became the core question, if you want so. And um, we stumbled upon a PHP bug report. Um, it was uh, fixed earlier, I think in, yeah, right, in September, so three months earlier. And, uh, it was about the security vulnerability in PHP, um, use after free uh, vulnerability. And um, somewhere deep down in the comments of this bug report, someone said, okay, I have thought about this more closely. If you do the right things with your session data, um, this bug causes PHP to uh, turn invalid data <coughs> into something that it thinks could work. And so this bug caused PHP to transform our invalid data into something that it considers valid. The key part is that nobody realized that this is a, a real issue for PHP applications. They all considered it some, some sort of more theoretical security issue, but not something that requires big attention. Um, that was a mistake, obviously. Um, yeah, but that's how things work out. So, we have a bug in PHP that causes um, that we can uh, manipulate session data. We, we can inject our own objects into a serialized session. But why does something happen if we do this? It's just stored data. Um, if you take a look at the actual exploit payload, um, you realize that it's a J database driver MySQLi object. That's the thing around it. And it has a disconnect handler, this part. What does a, what does a disconnect handler do? In uh, J database driver MySQLi, there's the disconnect method that runs through each and every disconnect handler and calls it. Purpose is if you uh, have a, a working or an existing database connection, it should be closed once the request is over in order to not leave it open. No brainer. And in order to do so, it uses a magic method. Um, that's really how they are called in PHP, uh, the destruct method in this case. And it's called the magic method because it gets called automatically. You don't need to take care of it. Once it's in the memory, it's get, it gets called automatically. So we have our first part in the exploit payload. 
um, we have a piece, an <coughs> object that automatically calls those disconnect handlers once the request is over, part one. In this case, the, uh, the disconnect handler is a simple Py object, um, a library that Joomla once used in order to pass RSS feeds. Uh, I think it's not in use anymore, it's deprecated, but it's there for legacy reasons. And uh, in our exploit payload, um, the init function of simple Py is uh, called as the disconnect handler. And the init function does all kinds of weird stuff, doesn't really matter. Um, and then comes the fun part. These are the, the interesting lines. Um, we have the feed URL, which in our case is the evil part. That's this one, the actual payload. Um, and this gets parsed as an URL. Do you remember? Our exploit code looks like this. And this is clearly not an URL. I think we all agree to this. Surprisingly, um, SimplePy thinks different um, because uh, SimplePy in this case uh, doesn't fail parsing the URL as long as you have a double colon somewhere in the string. Double colon is enough in this case. Um, it doesn't return any useful data in this case, but it doesn't throw an exception at all. One can argue about this again, um, but it took me quite a while to figure this out, because for testing purposes, I, tr uh, I removed this rather pointless JFactory call uh, at the first time, and uh, nothing happened. And then I finally realized that this is there for a reason. It was to work around these simple part things. And the next step is that uh, simple pi calls a caching function with the feed URL. As caching functions, our exploit code uses a cert. This is the actual payload that gets asserted, and assert is a PHP function that executes codes. And then we'll end up with this, which is not really the thing that you would like to uh, be executed by random people from the internet on your side, um, because it tells PHP to use something from the post request, decode it, and execute it. Yay! And then the fun part starts. Um, so it was a kind of a connection where multiple people screwed things up. We had the PHP session bug. Uh, we had people missing its, uh, its impact on the rest of the ecosystem. We had this kind of rather weird MySQL behavior. Um, we have SimplePy considering a double colon as the thing for URLs. And, uh, Actually, the Juma disconnect method didn't check if this is a proper connection. Um, it just called whatever it gets, and that's something we called later. Uh, we'll, we'll fix later on. Um, and all of this was uh, was realized in the first 12 hours um, after the exploit has been seen for the first time in the wild, and uh, we released the patch the day after. So it was 24 hours from uh, the first visibility of this issue in the wild till the patch was uh, online. Um, and uh, this was, a, at least in, in our case, it's kind of special that a vulnerability is used in the wild before we have a patch, because the normal way with Jimna security issues, luckily, is that people uh, report security issues in private. We can fix them, we can publish the patch, and afterwards, people try to, to re-engineer the patch and figure out what the actual vulnerability is. In this case, it was different. Um, people were actually being attacked while we were still developing the patch. And we also knew that it was pretty critical that this gets patched on each and every site as soon as possible. And you, the users, are uh, pretty slow when it comes to patching. Um, that's just the way it is. And so we decided to do something new. Um, we informed web posts about the vulnerability. Um, I had a list of, I think in the meantime, it's 120 posts, mainly German-speaking area, but also a few uh, international ones, a few uh, CDN providers. And um, we told them, this is the issue, this is the example exploit code, and now here comes the key part. 
This is an example rule for mod security that allows you to filter those requests. And um, this little email had a tremendous impact because it allowed, uh, for example, one major German hosting company, uh, which name uh, sums up to two, um, <laughs> <laughs> they were seeing 100,000 plus hits per hour the day after we sent them those emails. Uh, and we're pretty sure that these emails, this cooperation with the web hosts, saved uh, a lot of users. And that's why we established that as some sort of standard. The other thing we did uh, was uh, we started watching the bad guys uh, doing their work. Um, there's a an, uh, an, uh, security pen testing framework, Metasploit. It's an open source one, so you can actually take a look at GitHub and see them do their work. Uh, and it took them quite a while to figure out how the exploit work works, even though it was already online and public and you can could, uh, could take a look at it. Um, that was interesting. I think it took them three days, more or less, uh, until they had figured out how it works. This was the, the first half of the issue, because um, after doing some more close investigation on how this all worked, we realized that this would potentially impact each and every situation where user-generated data gets saved into a session, regardless if it's via the user agent, via something else. If it's user-generated and it gets saved into the session, we are screwed. And we thought about, well, there is this tiny method in Joomla that uses data from the session. Um, get user state from request is, uh, for example, used if you have a, a pagination and says uh, display me 50 items, as an example, and default is 25. In this case, this 50 uh, gets saved into your personal session um, for, 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 for this usage, um, and Joomla retrieves it using this method, uh, which checks, is it in a request, is it in a session, return me either of those both. And we're using this method in each and every form that we have in Joomla. Because Joomla is nice. Uh, if you fill out a form and you miss a required field, for example, you submit it, um, you are supposed to not lose your data. It just should display a nice error uh, message and you should see your, your, your data again. And um, we are doing this with sessions. If you put something in a form and it's invalid, we save it in the session, you get redirected, and the data comes out again. And uh, this was kind of a problem, because <coughs> if it affects each and every form of your site, you can't filter it properly anymore, because you would need to take a look at each get and each post variable, do some weird um, regex stuff in order to, to detect how this uh, serialized data looks. We would most likely break some, some valid use cases, uh, so this would be worse. Um, and so we decided to finally fix it by taking a workaround. Um, in the, uh, oh, the workaround, by the way, Nicholas, thank you very much. Um, it was his idea to fix it this way. Um, we're using the, the session data that we have, uh, we serialize it in order to save it, and we run base64 and code. This is the, the key part, because uh, with this, uh, an attacker can't um, uh, create a string um, that, uh, that uh, yeah, he, he can't create a string, uh, for example, with a UTF-8 and before character anymore, because this gets converted, and then the whole exploit doesn't work anymore. So base64 and code is the, the key. And um, we published the patch. And uh, we were kind of scared because we expected to see new exploits using the form method um, pretty soon. And actually, it took them quite a while to figure this out. Um, the first exploit I've seen um, was in August this year. And that's uh, the typical way how, how they look. Um, you do a GET request in order to retrieve the form. You do a POST containing the invalid data, you get redirected, the stuff gets read from the session, it's executed, and then you win and can use the installer. That's how this typically looks. Um, lessons learned. 
in this case. Uh, Geschwindigkeit, so uh, for the English guy's speed, is the key in those cases. Um, we learned that uh, if you publish a patch as a major project, your users have approximately eight to 10 hours to patch, because afterwards the first attack wave kicks in and you act. If you patch the other day, it's too late. Um, we also realized that the creativity of the attackers um, has two sides, if you want so. They are, the, the actual attack, the exploit, is something that requires tremendous amounts of creativity. I still think that this is one of the, the rather beautiful exploits that we have seen in, in the Joomla uh, security sphere. Um, and on the other hand, um, the guys who come after the first guy uh, lack some creativity because, for example, um, Till the present day, each and every exploit code uses underscore underscore test because the first guy did, and nobody questioned if this is supposed to be underscore underscore test. Fact is, you can end, uh, input there whatever you want, but they still all use test because they haven't understood how this thing actually works. And uh, the third thing, um, cooperation between web hosts and security teams um, has a tremendous impact uh, if you want to protect users, especially end users who are not sitting in front of their computers all day and can patch an installation uh, right away. Um, so that's something that we are working on right now. There's a, a project funded by a German ministry, um, I think for economy, yeah, the economy ministry. Um, they want us to protect uh, websites of small and medium sized companies so we get some funds um, and what I did with Joomla and a few web posts should now be scaled to uh, a larger project with more web posts and also more CMS attending so I have some sort of uh, inter CMS security task force that informs hosts of serious issues. Um, yeah, so this could have been a lot worse if the guys would have found out the, the, the form stuff earlier, um, this would have been a lot worse. Yeah, what else? I'm a bit ahead of schedule. Um, What's about the 347? Uh, because it was... Yeah, in, in 347, we, uh, we did this stuff with uh, transforming session data into something uh, that, that isn't vulnerable anymore. Um, and uh, yeah, that was the 347. <coughs> mm. we, uh, we got some quite good feedback um, from web hosts uh, on how we did this. Uh, oh, uh, th that's the part that I was uh, trying to talk about. Um, as soon as we realized that you only need a, a few number of ingredients, which is a PHP application, saving user data into a MySQL table for sessions, um, that these are the required ingredients. We thought that maybe a number of other applications could be vulnerable too, because this, this is rather a usual setup, if you want so. Uh, and so I informed 12, I think, 12 major open source PHP projects uh, on this potential issue. Nine of them didn't respond at all till the present day, no feedback. Um, the feedbacks that I got um, was uh, one from WordPress, um, which kind of scared me because it was, uh, we are not using PHP sessions, we have our own. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask further. One cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Probably something like this, yeah. Oh, I know. Okay. Save them there as in this case, um, but it was kind of interesting. Um, and uh, who also responded? Uh, Laravel, the guy behind this framework, um, he actually he accidentally uh, had already fixed it uh, earlier um, <laughs> because he was using Base 64 too. Uh, and the guys from Drupal, um, they di didn't really give me a feedback, um, but I, four months later, I think I got a tweet. Um, mentioning me from a guy from the Drupal community saying, thank you, David, uh, for your patch. And I was like, what? 
what patch? What are you talking about? Um, and he sent me the release notes of the current Drupal version, and there was I being mentioned as the reporter of a uh, security vulnerability. And um, they finally fixed it, so Drupal was affected too. Um, <laughs> they just forgot to respond to me. They just published it. Um, there was actually this. This was kind of a cool thing because they didn't only mention me personally, uh, uh, but also the, the junior security team as general as the reporter. That was some some good publicity uh, from the side. But I'm still kind of shocked that the other nine didn't respond at all. <laughs> <laughs> you are kind of shocked. Yeah. Uh, any other questions regarding? Yeah, Peter. Um, how can uh, providers get on their list uh, so they will be notified and get the most security fixes? Um, send an email to security at juno.org or email me personally. Um, right now, now, now to, to this large scale project, uh, we're, we are not, we haven't figured out yet what the required criteria are in order to get on this list. This is going to be the one of the key questions because. Um, this is, well, not confidential, but security critical data that we're communicating. So you want to keep this list as short as humanly possible. Uh, but on the other hand, you want to protect as many users as possible. So the list should be rather large. Um, and we're not really have an idea how to filter this. Um, but that's something that we are going to discuss with the, with the hosting companies. Um, yeah, just email me. Um, Right now, on those lists are uh, each and every web host in, in Switzerland um, because I have some good contacts with the Switch, the registry, and they are running an abuse center for all Swiss web hosts. And if I email them, they'll forward it to everyone else. Um, major uh, hosting companies internationally, uh, so one one Stato, uh, OVH, GoDaddy, um, Cloudflare is using it. Um, Midwald and Gonio, they both get it. Um, so they are in my list. Um, but surprisingly, they don't apply it. I haven't found out why. Um, yeah, but that's the case. They they get my email, but they don't apply it. And that's actually you, you can. This has a significant impact. You can see it in support forums and in Facebook groups. Um, for example, during the last vulnerability at, uh, now in December, um, we also sent those emails, and I think I haven't seen a single report, for example, from one. one, one, one from other hosts, you see loads and loads of reports. Kind of interesting. Any other questions? How about how, how about the current uh, number of uh, security issues you're working on? There are different it's information in the community. Just a few. Just a few. Just a few. Um, well, we, we can add some additional rumors. Um, let's say 900. No, uh, some maybe maybe. kind of rebooted the uh, security team uh, a few weeks ago. Um, now we have some proper processes. Actually, we have someone responding to emails, uh, which is a great step forward. Um, <laughs> multiple people responding to multiple emails multiple times. Um, because the, the last guy uh, yeah, didn't do this job that great. It's actually fun. I like it. I like the pressure. Um, <laughs> if, if, if it's if it's reported yeah, in the same boat. <laughs> if, if, if it's reported in private, um, it's okay. Normally, you don't need to that much. But in this case, it was zero day, so you need to move this out as soon as possible. I didn't have much sleep, um, but it was a very good feeling to actually ship the patch. Okay.